side in this video we're going to do another distance rate time word problem that may involve fractions or decimals and we're going to use the calculator to get through most of this because if you're dealing with these problems in your algebra course or your uh, college math class or whatever you're going to be able to use a calculator for these types of problems um, if you cannot I encourage you to check out my YouTube channel on simplifying fractions, dividing fractions, working with decimals and stuff like that. But still, we're going to tackle this and we have to understand how these fractions or decimals work. Very important here. Two small passenger planes leave an airport at the same time traveling in opposite directions. Plane A traveled at a rate of 200 miles per hour heading east. Plane B headed west at a speed of 220 miles per hour. The pilots use radios to communicate while flying, and these radios have a range of 735 miles. Assuming the planes maintain their direction, how many hours will it take for the planes to reach the range of their radios? And then how many minutes is this? So we're going to look at a fraction and a decimal application here, but again, we're going to use the calculator to speed this video up because it could get real time consuming if you were doing all of this pencil and paper, um, especially with these big numbers and simplifying fractions. But you should be able to use a calculator for this type of question if you saw one. So we got plane A and plane B. If you've seen my other distance rate time videos or if you've seen any others on YouTube, a lot of people do use a table. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So plane A and plane B, what are the speeds of these things? So we're going to fill this stuff in, in based on our word problem. Then we'll come back and talk about how we set up our equations. Plane A traveled at a rate of 200 miles per hour. So we have 200, and I'm going to write miles per hour just to remind myself this is in the unit of measurement, miles per hour. That's important too. Plane B was going at a speed of 220 miles per hour. So that's good news because we had the same units of measurement here. Now, since the planes leave the airport at the same time, they are going to travel for the same time T, which we do not know what that is because that's the question. The question says, how many hours? Well, these T's are going to be in hours. And our answer, our final answer that we get once we solve this equation, it will be in hours because our units of measurement are miles per hour. That's very important to understand there, especially when we go and convert this to minutes in a little while. Now the distance. This is where I see a lot of students make mistakes here. They'll put a 735 in both of these spots because they see the 735 miles. Well, that's not really what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to put two dots here. And consider this uh, a little line going in between these two dots. This right here, that's going to be the range of their radios. That entire line is going to be 735 miles. Well, if you look at the blue and the green, neither one of these are the entire distance. You know, this black dot right here in the middle is the airport, the runway. So plane A is going to the east. Plane B is going to the west. The sum of their distances will give us this entire 735 miles. That's important to understand. That's how we're going to set up our equation. So what are the distances of plane A and plane B? Well, remember your formula. Rate times the time is equal to the distance. Well, we have a rate. We have a time. We can multiply those together. So rate times time is going to be the distance of plane A. Same thing for plane B, 220 T though. So, you know, we got a different rate. Rate times time is equal to distance. So that's going to be the distance that plane A travels. This is the distance that plane B travels. Think of the distances as these little blue lines here, or the blue line here and the green line here. The sum of these two things will give us that total of 735. Notice I said sum, therefore our equation is going to be, we want to take the distance that plane A traveled, 200T, plus the 220T. We're adding these two distances together and we're going to set it equal to the range of those radios, 735. From here we can combine like terms. We have 420T is equal to 735 and now we want to divide by 420. So going to the calculator, let's do 735 divided by 420, and we're going to get 1.75. So T is equal to 1.75 hours. Now, let's go ahead and check this before we convert to minutes. So this means the plane, since they left at the same time and they're both in the air, 
If we look at plane A, plane A was going at a speed of 200 miles per hour and that plane traveled for 1.75 hours. So let's look at these numbers. Let's take the 200 miles per hour and let's multiply it times the time that the plane traveled for, 1.75 hours. That's going to be 350 miles and that's going to be what plane was that? Plane A. Let's repeat this process for plane B. Plane B, 220 times 1.75. And these two numbers here are the individual distances. Now we've already answered our question, but I'm trying to get you to think and understand where is the 735 tied into this? These are the individual distances that each plane traveled. Since they were going in opposite directions, remember we had these two arrows going in opposite directions, the sum of these two distances should be 735. So if we take the 350 plus the 385 to check, Notice the sum of those distances is 735 miles, which is the range of these radios. So any time after 1.75 hours, assuming they're still flying in the same direction, they're going to lose communication because they're outside of the range of their radios. Now, the next question was, how many minutes is this? Well, this is a mistake that I see students make quite often. When they see 1.75 and if that's in hours, they'll say, oh, well, it's an hour and 75 minutes. But that does not make sense because an hour and 75 minutes, well, 75 minutes is more than another hour. So we're talking like two hours there. That is not correct. This 0.75 is really like 75% of an hour or three-fourths of an hour. What can we do here to convert this two minutes. Well, anytime you have an hour, anything in hours, 1.75 or whatever, if you multiply it by 60, you will convert the hours to minutes. So let's take 1.75. Let's multiply it by 60. And there's our number of minutes right there, 105 minutes. Now I want you to think about this a little bit more. We're going to talk about it to get you to understand what 105 minutes really means. Well, 105 minutes, if I think about it in terms of, you know, 60 minutes is one whole hour, right? Plus an additional 45 minutes, that's going to be the 105 minutes. Well, think about what 45 minutes is in relationship to an hour. Well, 45 minutes out of 60 minutes is 0.75 hours. Take note of that. This 45 minutes is three-fourths, 0.75. They mean the same thing. Well, what is that 60 minutes? That's a whole hour. So think of this as one whole hour plus an additional 0.75 hours. That's where that 1.75 comes from. Now, again, hopefully you do realize that if we did all of this pencil and paper without a calculator, it definitely can be done. I have videos on simplifying fractions and dividing fractions and getting decimals out of them. But it would be real time consuming to take these numbers here and, you know, simplify them down. You'd have to divide by like 15 or something or 5 or 3 to simplify that down. But, you know, using the calculator there to speed it up, the main thing here is understanding, you know, how we got these distances, how we set the problem up, and then how we got our equation. And there you have it. That's an example of a distance rate time word problem that involves fractions and decimals. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.